Hey everyone, Jawad here from Digital Magician. Today's video is all about some VFX wizardry in After Effects. We are going to be tackling a client project that involves some tricky green plus symbol removal, object tracking and compositing to create a seamless final shot. Imagine you have a client video with a green plus sign that needs to be removed. But there's more. We will be compositing the button image onto the black and red plus symbol. So it looks like it was always there. Sounds impressive, right? Well, by the end of this video, you will be well on your way to mastering this VFX technique. All right, before we jump into After Effects, let's take a quick look at what we are working with. As you can see in this comparison, on the left, we have the original video with the green plus sign. On the right, we have the final video after the VFX magic has been applied. The green plus sign is gone and a new image has been seamlessly integrated into the scene. So, let's start with the tutorial. First of all, open Adobe After Effects. We need to create a new project and for that, I'm going to click this button new project. So this is our new project and to start this project, we have to import our footage in After Effects. There are multiple ways to import our footage, but I'm going to use this button because when I will import my footage using this button, it will create a new composition along my footage and the properties of that composition will be same as the properties of our footage. So let's click here and open your project folder where you have your content. Okay. This is our footage and this is the image we are going to composite in our video. So first of all, let's import this video. Select this video and click this import button. Okay, this is our video along with our composition and we can see everything is ready. This is our timeline. First of all, we should save our project. As you can see here, our project is not saved. So control S, move to our project folder where we want to save our project file and name your project file which in my case I'm going to name it plus sign and click save button okay our project file is saved now it's better and good and it's easier to work with project files where our time starts for frame 0 or 0 second but here we can see our timeline is starting from 8 hour or something. So let's change this. And uh, most of the time, I like to work with frames in After Effects instead of minutes or seconds. And to change this time into frames, I'll press control from my keyboard and click on this time. And you can see it is changed to frames. And now I want my first frame to be frame number zero. And to do that, I will right click here and go to composition settings here you can see this is the start frame text field and i will change this number to zero and click ok now we can see our first frame is frame number zero so just uh, after every step keep uh, saving your project file and first of all let's preview our video click this button to play your video on the initial play it will take some time to load the frames but as soon as all the frames are loaded the video will play smoothly. So here we will have to wait a little until the video is loaded. Okay, as we can see, uh, it just uh, finished the loading of frames. Really? Okay. Three, Let's watch two, this video. One. Action. Turn. Hold. Alright, three. Two, one, oh wait, sorry, hold on. And action. Turn. Both. Turn back to your original spot. 
Okay, this is our video in which we have to remove that green plus mark and we have to replace this black and red plus mark with an image of button and we have to work on the only duration after when he says action we do not need to work on the whole video we just have to work on the only duration where he says action so let's stop this video and first of all we have to trim our layer let's see where he says action he have given two takes and we have to work with the second take so let's see where it starts and oh wait, sorry okay and that. okay we have to start from here yeah from here so i pressed b from my keyboard to set the beginning of my work area and we have to go here and in the end we have to go before the laugh to set our work area until frame 1057 we just have to press n from our keyboard and we can see that our work area starts from here and end here and now i just want to see uh, this area of the layer so i can focus entirely on this specific part and to do that I have to trim out my layer and for that I'll just right click here and click trim comp to work area and you can see now we can uh, truly focus on that area that starts from here this is our video and it ends here that's it so now we can see that our first frame uh, number is changed again and we have to reset it to zero and for that we'll go back to composition settings again and change that start frame number to zero and click OK and save the project again. Now first of all let's remove this green plus symbol and for that I will use clone stamp tool. So just select this clone stamp tool from here and then double click this layer. Here we can see we have a brush but the brush size is very small we have to paint this blank area on our green symbol and to do that I'll just press alt from my keyboard and click here and then I'll start painting it here I think we should increase the size of our paint brush brush panel here you go and this is the diameter of our brush let's increase this value let's make it 100 so yeah now I'm going to paint this plus mark we can see how cleanly it has removed our green mark now we want to make sure that our paint strokes remain above the plus mark and do not move away first of all let's see is our paint applied to the whole duration or just one frame and to check that let's come here into timeline and select the layer and expand its properties go to the effects expand the paint and go to transform clone one and add a key to our position properties by clicking this stopwatch button here and then go to the last frame of this video clip and we can see that our green mark is no longer painted and to fix that we have to move the position of our paint so let's move our paint here and uh, bring it above our plus mark now we can see this area is covered and we have two keys that defines the location of our paint now let's check the position of our paint in the middle of the video and we can see it still need to be adjusted to do that let's move the paint by changing this position value bring it above it here now let's check in between in these two keyframes it still still need to be adjusted adjust it again 
by fixing the position value. Now check here. It is already good here. So just add a keyframe. So it can keep us reminding that we have checked here. Now check here and just slightly change the position of our paint mark to fix this. Now check here and here we still need a little adjustment. So move it a little bit here and yeah. Then check here and I think it is already fine. Just add a keyframe. Add a keyframe here and then come back here and check again. And yes, we need a little adjustment here. Move this paint area here. Now check this location and this is already fine. Add a keyframe. Now check here. Already fine, I think. Add a keyframe here and add a keyframe. I think from here onward, it is all fine and we do not need to adjust anywhere. No, we just need to adjust it only in the beginning. So if we check here, here, I think everything is fine now. And we do not need to add any more keyframes. Drag this and check if I think here we need a little adjustment. And check here. And maybe a little bit of adjustment. It's fine now. You can see a little dark smudge here, but don't worry, we will fix it. So yeah, we just have painted out our green mark. No cleft this layer. And save the project file and close this layer section. And let's see if our paint is still fine. Yes, our paint is still on the right location. Now we have to make it seamless as we can see a little dark patch here and we have to make it seamless and to do that we have to adjust its color. Right now this is a complete video and if I will change the colors the color effect will apply on the whole video and change the color of whole video but we don't want to do that. We just want to change the color of this smudge. So to do that I will I will duplicate this layer Save the project file and then turn off the volume from this layer and then I'll get back to my layer number two. Here I will delete this paint effect because I don't need this paint effect on my second layer. But we still have our paint effect applied on our first layer. Now I'll ask it to paint only on transparent, not on the video. And to do that just click paint on transparent checkbox and now I can show you what we have here. If I solo out my first layer, we can see on this layer we just have this image but not our video. This area is totally transparent and we can check this from here. You can see this area is transparent and this is our paint. See how it animates according to our video. Okay, turn off this transparency grid and turn off this solo okay now if I will change color of my paint that will be applied only this layer and as we have seen we do not have our video in this layer we have only our paint mark so my color correction will only be applied on this paint mark not our whole video so to fix that, let's go to effects control panel, right click here, go to color correction and select brightness and contrast. And just click on this top watch of brightness and contrast to add a keyframe on our frame number zero. I'll press U that will show us all of our keyframe. Just 
collapse the paint because we do not want to focus on paint keyframes. Here, these two keyframes are brightness and contrast keyframes. Okay, on my first keyframe, I can feel a little bit a difference, a dark smudge here, a little bit. And to fix that, I'll just increase a little bit of brightness. I think one is fine. Now, let's jump to the last frame. And here we can see it's a lot visible. And so let's increase our brightness here. Four. It is a lot more uh, red than this one. It's, it's not just about the brightness, it's about the color vibrance and saturation as well. And to fix this saturation, let's try to reduce or increase our contrast a bit more. Let's try with minus 60 and increase the brightness to maybe 6. Yeah, now it's totally seamless. We can't find it. I think this is a good point. Now let's check in between. Yeah, I think here we need to decrease our contrast to minus 40 and increase our brightness a little bit. Yeah, it's gone. Now check here. I think this is totally seamless in this duration. But we just need to fix here. So come at frame number 98 and increase our brightness decrease our contrast brightness to maybe 5 no 4 yeah no check here between these two keyframes we need to Decrease our contrast a little bit here. Yes, that's good. Now check here. This is already good. Add keyframes here. Check here. Good. Good here as well. Okay, check here. Can we find it? No. Add keyframes. Check here. Okay, so... This is, I think, cool. And we can't find it anymore. Maybe here we need to decrease our contrast a bit. Plus we need to increase our brightness. This is good. Save the project file. Collapse this layer. And I think we are done with removing wait a minute here in the beginning i can still see this paint smudge little bit more vibrant and dark i need to decrease its contrast here like minus 10 maybe check again minus 10 is thing yeah no it's good so I think we have completely and seamlessly removed our green mark here on frame number zero. Now let's play the video to check if we find any issue. Try it. Bullet. Turn back to your original spot. Okay, yes, we can see our green mark is completely removed seamlessly. Now we need to replace this tracking marker with an image of a button. And to do that, first of all, we need to track our tracking markers. And for that, I'll select my layer number two, go to the last frame of this layer, and get back to effects control panel right click here go to Boris FX Mocha and select Mocha after effect now click this button to open Mocha interface now let's track our background and to do that I will 
select this rectangular x spline button and let's select this area and change our minimum percentage pixels used to 90 and then save and click this track backward button to track our wall here we can see it is using our GPU to track each frame so here we just have to wait for a few minutes until it track all frame okay our tracking is just completed let's check out how our tracking is done and see if, the, if there is any problem and to check our tracking I will turn on planar surface and I will adjust its size according to these shapes and let's see if, if it sticks here until end and if it sticks that means our tracking is good otherwise we need to solve the tracking issue <coughs> let's see if this surface planner stick to our plus symbols yeah it's going very good yes the surface planner sticks until frame zero perfectly okay our tracking is done let's move to the last frame and expand the planar surface to the edges of our video now save this go to file clear cache render clip in global cache and click ok yes we want to continue now exit mocha ae now we have to bring our button image to this project and for that we'll go to project panel here let's right click in the project panel go to import click file and then select our image and click import now we have our image in our project panel select this file and drag and drop here in our timeline so this is our button that we have to attach here on the location of this plus sign so drag this button image here and drop it here for a while just reduce its transparency so we can know where we are placing it just place it here okay now let's increase its opacity value to back to 100 collapse this layer this is our button and I think we need to reduce the size of this button so go to scale and reduce the scale value and I think we need to make the size of this plus sign in on the wall we'll make it a little bit bigger than that sign so maybe this size is good save the project file now we can see we have our depth of field in our camera lens we can see how our this plus sign is blur so we need to add that depth of field effect to our button image as well and I think we need a little bit shadow around this button as well and for that first of all let's add a shadow and for that I will right click this layer go to layer styles and here we have few options drop shadow inner shadow outer glow inner glow we can use drop shadow or inner shadow if we need a directional shadow but we need a shadow all around our button and to do that we will take the help of outer glow I'll apply this and you can see we just added a little bit glow around this button let's come here in the timeline expand outer glow first of all change this blend mode to normal and then change our color of outer glow take this eyedropper and select this dark color that we have here and we'll need a little bit more darker so we'll come here 
Yes, this is fine. Make it 100% pan here. See how it looks. Okay, we need to change some values to make it a little bit more realistic. I think increase this, this size to 30. Try this to 5. And reduce this size to 10 or maybe 20 or 15 and spread to 10 and now reduce the opacity of the shadow because this is too much let's make it 40 percent i think this is fine now we need to add some blur to this button to create the illusion of depth of field and for that let's go to effect control panel right click here and go to blur and sharpen and apply camera lens blur and now we need to match our blur with the blur of this plus sign i think we need to add more blur so turn the value to 10 check again i think we need to add more blur maybe 20 or something check again I think this is fine but I think now our shadow looks too dark and to fix this let's expand this layer and go to our layer styles and reduce the opacity of our shadow to 10 increase the size of our shadow okay I think this is fine now let's fit our video this is we are getting and to make it more realistic i think we should add a little bit red lighting or tint over this button as you can see in the whole footage we have a lot of red and we can see the reflection of red color on this character as well so i think we should have a little bit tint of red on this button as well and to do that let's select this layer of button and go to effects control panel right click here go to color correction and let's go to photo filter and deep red i think magenta looks much better so this is what we got now we have to apply our tracking data to this image but right now we can see the boundaries of our image are these but the edges and boundaries of our tracking data is already full screen because we expanded our planet surface and made it to fit with the edges of the screen so our image boundaries and edges should also fit the edges of the screen to make the tracking data work accurately and to do that we just have to right click and click pre-compose and then we have to select move all attributes and click ok as we can see this button image has been pre-composed into a folder kind of layer and the boundaries and edges are, have been fit to the whole screen now we will apply our tracking data to this image and to do that let's select our third layer go to mocha select mocha expand tracking data click create tracking data this is our layer that have all the tracking data so yes this is selected and make sure this gear is on and then click ok you can see these values are just adjusted now from the export option select corner pin sport motion blur and from here we have to select the layer where we want to apply our tracking data which is layer number one silent button select this and click apply export button now our tracking data has been applied to our first layer and now we should play our video to see how it looks so first of all we need to go to our first frame by clicking here hmm. so i'm going to play the video to see finally how our video looks
okay after the editing this is our final video as you can see we have removed the green mark and we have replaced the black and red uh, plus mark with this button image and i think it looks great and done very well and now we have to export our video okay stop this video come to first frame save the project file select this timeline first of all i would like to purge all the memory and disk cache we can see right now it have saved 22.2 gb of memory and disk cache so let's delete this to make the render process faster select this timeline go to composition add to adobe media encoder from here i'll select and the format quick time and from here i would like to export it in apple prores 422 hq and from here we can tell media encoder where to export our video and name it as we wish and then click save and after that just click this little start queue button and it will start exporting your video okay we have just exported our video let's delete this from here and close adobe media encoder and there you have it with some after effects magic we were able to completely transform that video if you enjoyed this vfx tutorial and learned something new don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to digital magician for more awesome tutorials coming your way i would love to hear what kind of vfx projects you are working on so leave a comment down below and let's chat thanks for watching and see you next time